Stable Diffusion 3.5 Medium is out. And as I promised you guys, we'll be doing a deep dive into the new model, which is actually quite surprising. I was relatively impressed with the little bit of time I've had to play with it. And some are even heralding it as the new SDXL replacement. Now, what does that mean, especially with Flux being such a popular model? What it means is that number one, it's uncensored. Number two, it's small enough to work on most consumer GPUs. And number three, the fact that it's uncensored and open source and has a relatively flexible license means that we can potentially see a whole bunch of fine tunes and checkpoints just like we did with SDXL, something that we can't actually do with Flux. Up until this point, everything we've seen with Flux that is an iteration has been uh, Lora not a checkpoint. So it'll be very interesting to see how we move forward with this model. And it's great to see Stability AI actually listening to the thoughts and comments that the community has been giving out. So let's jump straight into it. Now, this is a two, 2.5 billion model. So it's slightly larger than Stable Diffusion 3, which I think came in at about 2 billion parameters. Now, the nice thing about it is you can use the same workflow that we use for Stable Diffusion 3.5 large. And I've got it set up here. What's incredibly cool about this model is not only does it run on most consumer GPUs, it's blazingly fast and it can go up to two megapixels, meaning we can generate images larger and I think more detailed than what we could do with SDXL, Flux, and even Stable Diffusion 3.5 large. As you can see here, I've got an image that I've generated at 1200 by 1200, and that's still not pushing the two megapixel limit. So like 3.5 large, you just want to download the model into your comfy UI models checkpoints directory. Now, if you try and run it and you run into a few errors, which I encountered earlier, you can go into manager, update comfy UI, update all, and then restart and it should work. Now, before we jump into comparisons with 3.5 large, one really important thing to note here, which is a really strong reason why you might want to consider 3.5 large and medium is the prompting style and the reintroduction of negative prompts. As you know, with Flux, it doesn't really take in a prompting style that encourages parentheses to emphasize certain points in the image. So you really have to work on that prompt to get Flux to understand what you're intending. With Stable Diffusion 3.5, as we've done with previous Stable Diffusion models, we can use parentheses to emphasize different parts of our prompt and use negative prompts to take away from the image items that we don't want. It is something that I have encountered recently with Flux where I've got an image, which is great, but it just has that one thing that I just don't want in it and I can't figure out how to get rid of it because even when you try and prompt negatively and say, I don't want this or don't include this, it does end up, it's like the pink elephant. By telling it not to do it, it will do it. So as we did before, I've prepared a handful of prompts from the Prompt Crafters database. This is a database that contains a whole bunch of prompts. It's got a phenomenal visual library that includes all types of images, whether they're animations, stock photos, logos, text, and even ideas for leaflets, websites, marketing posters, and so on. I use it all the time and you just grab the prompt, tweak it and jump right into it. So I grabbed a bunch of the latest ones that we have here and I dropped them into this comparison and we'll be comparing once again, Flux 1.1 Pro, Flux Dev 3.5 Large and 3.5 median. I have to say, I, I don't know if they've made any modifications to large, but I was quite impressed with the images overall, not just with large, but with medium as well. So if we jump into the first batch of images, we've got here, a man takes selfies in the background of his workplace at home. On the table are monitors with charts of cryptocurrencies, a cup of coffee in his hand. One hand is taking selfies and the other is holding a cup of coffee. I removed these flags as these are specific to mid journey. So having a look at the flux versions, this is the Flux Dev one. We do see some charts up here and he is holding the coffee cups in the hand, but I think the prompt adherence is not quite there. You can't really tell it's cryptocurrency and he's holding coffee in both hands, not one. Kind of awkward. The Pro one is considerably better. This definitely looks like it's a selfie. So he's got the phone in the right position, one cup, the candlesticks in the computer screen in the background. Can't quite tell it's crypto, but it's close enough. I think this is a pretty good interpretation for the 1.1 Pro. 3.5 large, kinda got it. We got the candlesticks again, not really a selfie. He is holding one cup of coffee, but there is weirdness here in the hand. And this is kind of, this is part of the issues that I saw last time when we looked at 3.5, a lot of issues with the hands. Medium though, uh, it's quite disappointing. We've got the person sticking out of the table. We do have the one coffee cup. They're not holding it. They're missing a hand. Technically a selfie, but 
This is nothing to write home about. This is very disappointing. Next prompt. All in matte finish, matte black, plush private jet interior with a large seating area featuring a matte pink sofa and matte pink chairs for passengers to relax in. Matte floors, matte walls, lots of matte. Matte ceilings are matte black. There is a sports car in matte pink color inside the aircraft. In the middle, a hyper-realistic photo in high resolution. So we've got a couple of quality modifiers and a very heavy emphasis on matte, which Lux Dev seems to have nailed right on the money. We are inside an airplane. Everything looks relatively matte, matte pink chairs, matte black ceiling, and there's a sports car in the middle, which is also matte pink. So I would say relatively good prompt adherence overall on Flux Dev. Flux 1.1 Pro, Again, similarly, I think we missed a few pointers on the prompt adherence. Definitely not matte black ceiling and walls. No color was specified for the floor, so I don't know if carpet counts as matte, but the matte pink sofas are there. Oh, here we go. Matte walls and matte ceiling are matte black. So the ceiling of the floor did not get it. So Flux Dev, better prompt adherence than Pro, but again, image quality is pretty good overall. Now let's have a look at Stable Diffusion. 3.5 large, similar to 1.1 Pro. Didn't quite get the matte ceiling, matte floors. You are in a jet, not quite spacious, pink sofa, so similar performance to Pro. And then we've got, oh, this is large again. Let's have a look at it in medium. Okay, well, at least here it looks like that medium performs slightly better than large. We did get the matte floor. I don't know if you'd consider this ceiling matte. Uh, it's got the white airline top and then it's kind of got this black stuff on the side. Not quite sure what's going on there. We got the pink sofa, so at least that's a win. Okay, moving on. Ariel in a Gucci black dress in New York City. Cute cartoon Disney style. Now, we tried this prompt and I tried it without the Disney style so that we could compare how the models take the same prompt and then apply it to different styles. So first looking at the Disney style, this is Flux Dev, not bad, pretty impressive. Does look like New York, good blend of that realistic and kind of Disney 3D animation style. Definitely looks like Ariel, so pretty good overall. Slight issue with the hand, so catching Flux having the same issues as Stable Diffusion, but overall it's a pretty good image. Flux 1.1 Pro just takes that and just blows it out of the park. Absolutely amazing in terms of the vibrant colors. Great character design, obviously Ariel. The only thing I'd say is that the background doesn't quite give me New York vibes. I guess it's trying to be Times Square, but I really get more like Tokyo vibe. But aside from that, absolutely bang on, right? Let's have a look at the Stable Diffusion. So 3.5 Large actually did an even better job. Besides the fact that this looks almost photoshopped, because that's obviously a picture of New York, the character design of Ariel is very impressive. Definitely got the Gucci belt, so absolutely even going on the branding element here. So I guess this could technically be a black dress if it was one piece. So I'd say that's the only weakness. The hands are brilliant, so looks like Stable Diffusion can do hands when it wants to or when it's not a human. Animated characters, great. Humans, boo. But yeah, very impressive. Let's have a look at medium. So medium is probably the weakest overall. I think there might be something wrong with my settings, which is making it look blown out, but that shouldn't affect the rest of the image. We definitely have a street here that kind of looks like New York. A little funny business happening with the cars, but if we detract from that and we look at the character, more or less looks like Ariel. We don't have the cool little Gucci accents that we saw in the large model. I'm guessing that's the benefit of the massively increased parameters. But overall, it still looks like a relatively fancy, oh, it's not black, it's black to green. Does that count? Is that cheating? I'm not sure. And once again, hands are in relatively decent shape, so could have been worse. I actually wish I'd set up SDXL. It would have been amazing to compare this with SDXL. Um, if you are a subscriber to my Patreon, I might drop that comparison over there and or on my website. So subscribe to stay tuned. All right, let's grab the next one. Oh, this is an interesting one. So this is a complex one and I was genuinely surprised to see who performed better. So expressiveness like that of a human, contemporary concrete business center in London, architecture transforms into an anthropomorphic being. So this is like really wordy prompt, but what it's trying to say here is take a building, anthropomorphize it, give it a face or something. Oh, before we jump on, 
let's see how the models perform when we take away the Disney element. So we'll come back to that architecture one in a minute. This is the Flux Dev, Ariel in a Gucci black dress in New York City scene, realistic. Uh, I mean, we got the background right, but uh, those facial features are kind of creepy. So you technically got the character, but uh, definitely some still doing some 3D references over there. That's Dev. Pro did a much better job. Once again, blowing it out of the park. Absolutely stunning, realistic, black dress. Not quite the Gucci logo like we saw in Stable Diffusion 3.5 Large, but close enough. Let's check out Large. So Large, again, bang on with the black dress and the Gucci logo. Definitely New York, definitely a person, definitely realistic. Does not look like Ariel, absolutely missing the red hair. So failed on that point. Scored 10 out of 10 everywhere else. For medium, I ran it twice because I still don't think I've got something right in the settings. Uh, I may have to do a separate video just on getting the most out of 3.5 medium, but over here we have the red hair, black dress, New York City. So all of those are scored on point. I mean, New York is a strange city, so I guess she could be standing on a giant red couch in the middle of the street. So I guess that counts. The dress does look like it could be Gucci if we were able to zoom in on those logos. I guess it might be something that Gucci might create. But like I said, some weirdness going on here in the face. I don't know if that's because of my settings because on large, we're not getting any of that weirdness. So like I said, I run it again and we now definitely have some of those Gucci references. So the medium model does have that. Got the red hair, got New York, got the black dress, got the weirdness in the face. May need some more fine tuning in the prompting because it's a, it's a lower parameter model, just like we might've done with SDXL. Okay, going back to that architecture one. So looking at Flux, something that's very realistic, very usable, great architecture. I don't know if I'd consider this anthropomorphized, especially compared to what we're about to see, but yeah, it's a good image. Surprising uh, a Pro, once again, blowing it out of the park. This is absolutely amazing architecture. It, it looks like professional architecture photography, if I'm honest. But does it meet the prompt? Well, after looking at Stable Diffusion's results, you guys tell me. Uh, that's definitely an anthropomorphized building. It's got a face, it's got some degree of expressiveness, but definitely picked up the prompt a lot better than Flux. Here's the medium version. So the large ones are definitely a lot more subtle. They look like the buildings have this intent to have these facial elements, especially this one over here on the left, definitely looks like something that could be realistic. The medium one just looks like a regular building with a face sticking out of it. I mean, it did follow the prompt, but I don't know about the image quality. Okay, next is some product photography. We've got three essential oils placed in a setup. The main elements here, the background is, rose da is a rose daisy with a purple sky and a full moon visible foreground is a gray stone surface. Let's see how we did. Okay, we've got the daisy, we've got the purple sky, full moon, rocky surface, and this is Flex Dev, so pretty good overall. The only thing here I'd say that went wrong is there is no number specified. So we just have, oh, here we go, three products. It gave us two instead of three, so Flex Dev can't count. Flux Pro, on the other hand, did give us three products, did give us the same logo on all three products, so there's that consistent element. We've got the purple sky, the moon, the daisy, the rock in the foreground. So all the elements well and accounted for. Large, you do me wrong, large. Two products, we do have the purple sky, we do have the daisy, we do have the rock, but you can't count. Did the second attempt do any better? It did, we have three products. Purple sky, moon, rock, great. But now the question is, how useful are these pictures from a product perspective. I still think Flux 1.1 Pro blew it out of the park here. You could just take these logos, replace them with yours and Bob's your uncle, right? Dev, you could get away with it. Same thing, right? These are suitable, but Stable Diffusion kind of has a bit of that fantasy-ish look. I'm not really sure that it quite meets the mark. Let's have a look at Medium. So I think Medium did a much better job. Aesthetically, again, I think there's something wrong with my settings that's making it look a little bit off, but three bottles, purple background, rock foreground, and a very usable image. Basic, but usable. All right, we've got a fashion one here, hyper-realistic cyborg fashion model with a futuristic and minimalistic streetwear outfit in black and yellow, lime green, dynamic pose. 
So the main elements here is a futuristic outfit, fashion model, streetwear, black and yellow, lime green, and a front, modern frontal portrait photo and minimalist. Okay, this is Flux Dev. Technically counts, except for the fact that our model looks like a toy doll. But everything else is there. Streetwear, neon, black, minimalist. I'd say a seven out of 10 on this one. Okay, uh, Flux 1.1 Pro, once again, this model just continues to impress me. We've got the streetwear, we've got the neon, minimalistic. I don't know if I'd call the pose dynamic, but we'll let it go. Black studio background, relatively dramatic. It ticks all the, all, all the box. 3.5 large, uh, I would say it does the same. We've technically got the black background. Don't know if I'd consider this streetwear, but it could be in a futuristic sense. The only thing I don't like is, again, the hands and arms are not all that clear. Uh, I do have a second instance here which might work slightly better. I mean, she's more robotic than futuristic, so I'm not sure if I'll give the point, but the image quality is great. And again, you've got the black background, minimalist, black and neon colors. And finally, medium, kind of did an okay job. This is somewhat closer. It's got a human model, got the futuristic look, missed out on the background, so not a black background. You've got the neon and black. The only issue here is there is some weirdness going on here which would make the image unusable. So medium, not a winner. And that's pretty much it. What did you guys think about the Stable Diffusion 3.5 medium? There's definitely some strengths in there, especially the fact that you can do a two megapixel image blazingly fast and is uncensored, but there still seems to be some issues with the images coming out. Disclaimer, I'm not sure if I have something wrong with the settings. I'm gonna play around with it. If I manage to improve the images, I will put them down in the description below what settings I use to get better images. Having said that, I do think that it's still a great starting point for fine tuning and checkpoint development. I think the community could come up with something really incredible for this, and it'll be fantastic to see how the model performs, especially with Sana right around the corner. I genuinely wonder what the level of openness that we'll get when the source code of Sana is released and whether the community will gravitate towards that instead of this model when it comes to checkpoint development or whether we'll end up with some kind of a merge of the two. It's a very exciting time to be an AI image generation. Just a year ago, we only had one model as the Excel. And even though we thought that Stability AI was gonna implode, we're now swimming in options. Like I genuinely can't keep up, which is both a good and a bad thing. Anyway, if you found this helpful, please don't forget to like and subscribe. And if you really wanna help the channel out, please drop by our Patreon. Your support there helps me make these videos possible. Thank you to everyone who's a supporter out there. And if you like the prompts that I've been using, again, link for Prompt Crafters is down below. I use this prompt database all the time. If you've been watching the videos, you might even be sick and tired of hearing me talk about them, but I just love the platform a lot. There have been a few issues with some emails not coming out. So if you have been having any issues, if you purchased it and you did not get an email, please shoot them an email at info at promptcrafters.co or message me directly, and we'll make sure that you guys get sorted. Thanks so much, guys, and I'll catch you in the next one.